Welcome everyone to this tutorial. Today we're going to be going over the basics of GIMP. So let's go ahead and get started. Now you can see here I went out with a picture frame that I found in the garbage and decided to take a few photos and we're going to see what we can do with those. I'm going to go ahead and grab this photo right here and drag that into GIMP and then I'm going to also grab this photo right here and drag that into GIMP as well. So we have two photos and they look pretty similar, although you can see here this one is a little bit different on the exposure. So I'm going to grab this top photo since this is going to be my background. I'm going to leave this photo on top. Let's go ahead and match these two photos up as closely as we can. So I'm going to grab the top photo and here in the opacity, I'm going to go ahead and bring the opacity down and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for kind of where what I'm trying to do is just match these up as closely as possible. So I think that my image needs to come over a couple of pixels and maybe down one pixel. Not very much. And what I'm going to be trying to do is I'm going to be erasing my body that would be inside of this mirror frame right here. Uh, now that we've gone ahead and matched up our image. Obviously the leaves here aren't going to match up because there was a slight breeze that day. I'm going to bring the opacity back up. I'm going to turn off the visibility of that layer. Next we're going to go to my favorite tool which is the lasso tool. You can hit F on your keyboard or come up here and click F here. Go into the tool options and in the feather edges let's go ahead and select a radius of 2. And the reason that I like this lasso tool more than I like let's say the pen tool, is because in GIMP you can actually edit your, your selection afterwards. I don't know why Photoshop doesn't have this ability. It seems pretty standard. I use the lasso tool probably more than any other tool in GIMP. Next, I'm going to hit Shift and the plus key to zoom in and go ahead and let's just outline the mirror the inside of what would be the mirror. Okay, hit enter and there we go. So now that we've gone ahead, I know I missed a little bit right down here, but that's okay. Now that we've made this selection, let's turn our top layer on and then go ahead and add a layer mask. And I'd want to choose this black full transparency and click add and then change the black and white here so that we have white and then hit shift B or go ahead and select the bucket fill tool and then click inside of our selection and bam you can see that we've gone ahead and added in what appears to be maybe a portal through my body or something, I don't know. And then hit Control Shift J to zoom out. Now we have a little bit of an issue here and that's part of the issue is the shadow back here still shows that there's nothing in the mirror. And I don't know, maybe that's something that we want with our image or maybe not. Uh, but one thing I do know is I want to color correct this image now. Before I do that, I'm going to select my inside, in, internal mirror image and then come over here to color, exposure. I'm just going to bring the exposure down just, just a hair, just to make that match a little bit more, a little bit more with the image of me. And then I'll click OK. Next, let's go ahead and crop so hit shift c and or come up here and select the crop tool and then in the crop options let's choose fixed and type in four by five and turn off allow growing if that's on for you and i'm going to go ahead and just kind of zoom in like this and then control shift j so now that uh, we've zoom we've cropped we can zoom in and uh, I'm just going to duplicate these two images here. The top image, I'm going to hit Control Shift D to duplicate it. And the bottom one, Control Shift D. And then move the bottom image up above my initial two images. And then grab that top image, right click, and go down to Merge Down. The reason that I'm doing that is any color correction that I want to add to this image, I don't want to have to do that work twice. If I, if I didn't do that, then I would have to do the color correction on the back image and the front image. But I've gone ahead and kept these two images back here so that if I feel like the color corrections that I add, so that if I feel like they're not good, there's no problem. I can just delete this top layer and I'm right back to where I started. So let's go ahead and come here to colors. I prefer using the curves. 
I feel like I get the best results. So the first thing that we can do is go ahead and brighten things up just a little bit by grabbing that top control point and add in a little bit of contrast. And we can kind of add in maybe a little bit of an S curve. Next, if we come into the red channel, I do want to increase the red just a little bit. Increase it a lot, you can see that I get maybe this old timey film look. Just want just a, just a hair, just a hint. And then in a green, let's go ahead and bring the green curve down a little bit to add in a little bit of magenta. And then in the blue, let's go ahead, ooh, a little too much. Okay, so if I turn off the preview, I can see what I had. Turn on the preview, I can see where I am now. Let's go ahead and click okay. And last but not least, I don't like this super bright highlight on my forehead. So I'm gonna hit shift and the plus key, and zoom in, and then I'm gonna grab the clone tool right here at the top, you can hit C or grab the clone tool. Actually, I'm gonna grab, grab the healing brush, hit H on your keyboard for that, and then add in a new layer, Control Shift N, and then in the tool properties, go down and make sure that sample merged is turned on. Now, if I bring the size of my brush down, there you go, something like that, I can hit Control click on my keyboard, I can Control click on the image, of a part of my skin that I, I want to keep. And then I can use that to heal, to heal kind of some of this blemishing on my skin. I know that I'm not going to be able to get rid of it completely because that would then look pretty crazy. Um, let me go ahead and change back to the clone brush and turn the force down to something like 15. Now if I hit Control Shift J, we can see the difference. I no longer have a bright, blinding spot on my forehead. This was just a little introductory to GIMP. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. I saw many of you voted for GIMP tutorials on my last poll, and I really thank you guys so much for participating in those. That really helps me know what you guys want. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.